Okay, so before we get started here, there's a really important drawing that we have to make that you should make all the time in this class, and it's a great drawing to remind you. So, ICF, ECF out here, right? We know that's the cell membrane, membrane separating the two. But something that we did establish earlier in Chapter 2 is that there's a lot of sodium outside of cells. We also established that there's a lot of potassium inside of cells. And so the natural inclination for these two ions is sodium likes to leak into cells. And potassium likes to leak out of cells. They both follow their own concentration gradient and sodium leaks in and potassium leaks out. Now, the sodium-potassium pump puts the ions back into their original positions. So the sodium-potassium pump is like, oh, you've been getting free entry into the cell, and it pumps the sodium back out. It says to the potassium, no, 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 you are not supposed to leave, and it pumps it back in. So these pictures that I have over here is in like an overhead view of rotating doors, which I don't go into because they give me horrible claustrophobia and anxiety attacks, like elevators. But the idea here with the sodium-potassium pump is that it's not an even exchange. We don't get one sodium for every potassium pumped. It doesn't work like that. In fact, what happens is originally the sodium that has leaked into the cell will start to load itself into the sodium-potassium pump. And as this rotating door starts to turn, two of the potassium that leaked out of the cell load themselves in the door as well. So after the rotating door turns totally, two potassium ions have been moved back to their original position into the cell, and three sodium ions have, moved, have been moved back into their original position outside of the cell. And now people usually ask, why is the exchange two for three? And this is because sodium leaks into the cell faster than potassium leaks out of the cell. And so this sodium-potassium pump has this differential of the 2 to 3 because it knows or compensates for the rate at which these ions leak. So let's draw something like this over here. We're going to have lots of sodium in the ECF, because that's where it is. But by passive diffusion, somewhere else in the membrane, some of that sodium has leaked back onto the inside. Right? We also have the same situation with potassium. There's tons of it in the ICF, but somewhere on another part of the cell membrane, potassium has leaked into the outside, and it, it needs to be put back into its rightful place. So step one is that the three sodium ions load themselves into the sodium-potassium pump. And what this does is this prompts two potassium ions to also load themselves into the pump. And we get a differential here, right? At some point, these two ions, or these two groups of ions, are going to be passing each other, right? Because the sodium is getting pumped out to its area of high concentration, and the potassium is getting pumped in to its area of high concentration. And I just want to remind you that this is what is called counter-transport, which I think is the term that your book uses. But you may hear me call this anti-port or anti-transport. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it like that. <laughs> and at the end, when we're finished, the two potassium ions are released into the ICF, which is their original position, and the two sodium ions are also, sorry, three sodium ions 
are also released into the ECF, which is their original position. So there's a lot going on here, right? There's that differential exchange. There's the realization that the ions are exchanged at that different rate because they leak at different rates. There's carrier mediation here. There's the use of ATP that gets used to move these two sets of ions. And then finally, we have the idea of counter-transport. This, hearts, stars, balloons, will haunt us all throughout the semester. And I'm sorry for that.